Fun fact. Lucy took a memorable trip to Italy in the early 1960s, which was inspired by her love for the country and its culture. This trip was significant because it allowed her to explore her Italian heritage, as her maternal grandparents were Italian immigrants. During her travels, she visited various cities, including Rome and Venice, and even took part in a cooking class to learn authentic Italian cuisine. Her experiences abroad added a personal touch to her work and showcased her zest for life and exploration. The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. Good morning, Mrs. Carmichael. Good morning, George. Good morning, Mr. Mooney. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> Did you come here for a calendar? Well, here you are, courtesy of the Danfield Bank. Well, thank you very much, but I already have one. I just came over to talk to you, Mr. Mooney. Oh. Uh, please, may I have an advance on my allowance? No. But you don't even know why I want the money. The answer is still no. Oh, you always say no. If you ask me, Mr. Mooney, you have a very neurotic attachment to my allowance. Now, please, Mrs. When Tom. it comes to me and my money, your mind is warped. <laughs> the only thing that's warped around here is your idea of how much money you have to spend. Now, if I gave you an advance on your allowance every time you asked for it, we would now be dipping into the year 1972. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, this is so important. I've just got to have that money so I can take a vacation this summer. You can't afford a vacation. But everybody I know is going away on a vacation. But me, I'm going to be spending a whole boring summer all alone in a ghost town. Well, it won't be too bad. Once a week, you can stand on the front porch and wave to the stagecoach. <laughs> oh, you're a big help. Now, please, Mrs. Carmichael, if that's all you have to say, I'm very busy. I'm trying to get my work finished up before Mrs. Mooney and I take off on our cruise. <laughs> you're going on a cruise? Where are you going? Oh, we're taking a freighter to the Caribbean. Oh, a freighter to the Caribbean. Oh, that sounds so... How come you get to go on a cruise and I don't get to go anywhere? Because I am who I am and you are who you are. <laughs> well, I don't think that's very nice. <laughs> Rubbing it in just because I don't have as much money as you do. No, 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 no. That's not very no, nice. No, no, Mrs. Carmichael. It really is. No, no. If I may make a revolutionary suggestion, you could get a job. That way, between now and summer, you would save enough money to take a vacation. Well, I'd be very happy to get a job, but after our last two experiences, the Acme Employment Agency and I aren't speaking. <laughs> well, you are in luck. Why? Why am I in luck? Because a new employment agency just opened on Oak Street. Oh, good. Well, I'll go right over there. I'll tell them that you sent me. No, please don't. <laughs> I'm trying to get their banking business. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Well, Vivian, you got yourself a companion for Lake Placid. Did Mr. Mooney give you an advance on your allowance? No, oh, he's just as tight as ever. <laughs> Where are you going to get the money? Where's that typewriter? Now, Lucy, the kids need that typewriter for school. You're not going to hawk it. Oh, don't be silly. I got myself a job, and I'm going to practice. You're going to repair typewriters? <laughs> I have a job as a secretary. Oh, I think you'd do a lot better repairing typewriters. <laughs> Vivian, for your information, tomorrow morning I start work for the Danfield Attorney Service. I'm going to do all sorts of things. I'm going to file documents, serve subpoenas, type and take shorthand. Oh, it's going to be good to feel those old keys under my fingers again. 
Lucy, you haven't felt those old keys under your fingers since you were in high school, and that's been at least... Never a... mind. <laughs> now, I'm going to have to find something to copy. Ooh, brother. <laughs> Two, oh, that. Music. Yes. That's, that's fine. on words are words. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Jack and Jow went up the hill to scratch a pair of Snyders. Jerk fell down. All right, that's enough now. I guess I went a little too fast. Well, I guess you did. <laughs> Maybe I better practice my shorthand. Will you give me some dictation? Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Ready? Mm -hmm. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what... Well, to... Not so fast, please. There... <laughs> was... <laughs> an... <laughs> old... <laughs> woman... who... Uh. <laughs> Take it easy. Just, just a little slower, please. <laughs> there... was... Question 1. Why does Lucy need to get a job in this episode? 1. She wants to start saving. 2. She wants to take a trip. 3. A new car. Question 1. Why does Lucy need to get a job in this episode? 1. She wants to start saving. 2. She wants to take a trip. 3. A new car. The answer, she wants to take a trip over the summer. Hi, girl. Well, hello there, working girl. <laughs> How'd your first day at the job go? Beautifully. In fact, I did so well as a secretary, they promoted me to process serving. <laughs> Typing was that bad, huh? <laughs> well, yes, if you must know. Those parties of the first part are even tougher than Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. <laughs> well, don't be discouraged, honey. You'll make a good process server. Well, I'd better. I've been given my first subpoena to serve tomorrow. And I have the distinct impression that if I don't make good at this, the boss may fire me. What makes you think that? He said so. <laughs> well, that would give you a clue. But I don't think I can bungle this. All I have to do is take the subpoena, see who it's for, find the person, and say, are you uh, Theodore Mooney? And hand it to him. Oh. <laughs> Theodore Mooney? Oh, no. uh, oh, you'll be furious. Just furious. Oh, now why, Lucille? You're just doing your job, and if you didn't give it to him, somebody else would. Oh, now, why would he get mad if you hand him a subpoena? He'd get mad if I handed him the Nobel Prize. Well, you have to do it. Yes, I have to do it. 
First thing tomorrow, I'll go to that bank and get it over with. Now, what's wrong with tonight? He just lives down the block. All you have to do is go up to his house, knock on his door, and get it over with. All right. I'll do it. I'll go down to his house, knock on the door, and get it over with. Good. <laughs> I can't do it. Now, Lucy. No, I can't do it. Maybe it would help you if we rehearsed a little bit. I could play like I'm Mr. Mooney. All right. I I'll take the subpoena. I'll go outside the door. I'll ring the bell. And you are Mr. Mooney. Yes, that's mine. mine. Mrs. Bagley. Abby! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, pardon me for barging in like this. But your back door was unlocked and no one answered my knock. You see, I, I wanted Mrs. Carmichael to, uh, don't you answer your front door either? <laughs> well, if you're not going to, I will. Are you Theodore Mooney? Well, of course I am. And this must be the wrong house. <laughs> Just what kind of a game are you playing? Uh, well... Uh, no, 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 I don't want to know. Would you just sign these checks, please? They'll take care of your basic needs while I'm away on my trip. Just those three right there. There's the pen. Uh, Lucy tells me you're taking a trip. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm meeting Irma in New York tonight, and the boat leaves tomorrow. At least I think it's leaving. If it doesn't sink under the weight of all the clothes that Irma's taking, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, well, I hope you get to go on a nice vacation trip this summer, too. Thank you. How's the job coming along? Why do you say that? <laughs> I just hoped it was going well, that's all. It's going fine. Good, good. Well, I must be going. I'm taking the 615 to New York. Theodore Mooney! <laughs> Bon voyage, Theodore Mooney. Thank you, Lucille Karma. Oh, what's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. I just couldn't do it. I tried, but I just couldn't do it. When he looked at me with those beady little eyes of his, I just went limp. My spirit was willing, but my subpoena was weak. Well, I'll send you lots of pretty picture postcards from Lake Placid. Oh, Viv, I just can't stay here all summer, all alone. It looks like you're going to have to. Oh. Hey, he's taking the 615. I'll catch him at the station. What makes you think you're going to be any braver at the station than you were right here in your own home? Well, I won't be any braver, but he's the president of a bank, and he wouldn't want to be seen striking one of his depositors in public. <laughs> now, come on, get your coat. <laughs> I don't see Mr. Mooney. Maybe he's out on the platform. I better count these, make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. I'll be right back and take them out to the train, sir. Thank you, thank you. 11, 12, 13, 14. 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, good night, nurse. I got that little square one. You, one of the bags is missing. A little square bag like that. If I showed up in New York without all of the luggage, my wife would kill me. Oh, you know how Irma is. Woo! Right. Oh, of course you don't know her. Let me tell you. She is the kind of a woman who keeps notes. She makes long lists, puts a little X after one thing. Maybe it's a check mark if she likes, but usually it's an X because she doesn't kind of uh, she uh, uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll let you out with the text. I guess he isn't here yet. But he left our house before we did. He probably stopped by the bank to leave those checks of yours. Maybe so. Well, let's sit right here where we can watch all the doors. Okay.
here by now if he's going to catch that train. Maybe we better look around outside, huh? All right, I'll look out here, you look out there so we don't miss it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and would you give me some change for the telephone, please? See, I'm going on my first cruise. Now, I'll be gone from my bank for at least six weeks. I just thought of something I wanted to tell my vice president, because he's kind of slow on the... He, he, you have to kind of keep... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no, he, he just isn't here yet, that's all. But he's got to be here. If he's going to catch a 6.15. Oh, you better get here sooner. That train will leave without him. It wouldn't dare. <laughs> right. I'm going out there and see if his car is here. Okay. You stay now. Keep a sharp lookout. All right. probably just hiding from me just just so I'll lose my job. Lucy, he doesn't even know you're looking for him. That wouldn't stop him. <laughs> Damn. There he is. That's him. Quick, this is him. Come on, get it out, get it out. Hurry up. Oh, where is it? Get, hurry up. Oh, get it out. before he gets away. What's the matter? Now, you said you'd be better here in front of people. Oh, what do I know? <laughs> Take it over there and put it in his pocket when he isn't looking and then run. Oh, Viv, a lot you know about process serving. It isn't legal unless you inform the person he's being served. Oh, well. Hey, huh? I know what I'll do. What? I'll slip it into his pocket, and then I'll go in there, and I'll call him and have him paged, tell him to look in his pocket, and he'll find a nice surprise. <laughs> I did it. I'm going to make the call. <laughs> Question 2. Who is Lucy trying to serve a subpoena to? 1. Mr. Mooney. 2. The Mayor. 3. Yogi Bear. Question 2. 
Who is Lucy trying to serve a subpoena to? 1. Mr. Mooney. 2. The Mayor. 3. Yogi Bear. The answer, Mr. Mooney. jumped on and off a moving train. <laughs> How did you ever get up the nerve to jump off the train? Well, it isn't hard when you got a lot of people running after you calling you a pickpocket. <laughs> oh, you poor little thing. Come over here and sit down. This has been an awful rough day for you, honey. There. <gasps> There's Mr. Booty. How can we be sure? Oh, now, don't be silly. You know that, Mr. Moody. Come on, come on. Go put that subpoena in his pocket. No, I don't want any more of that pocket jazz. I'm just going to hand it to him. No, I don't usually eat hamburgers, but my wife's having dinner with friends in New York, you see. And so I'm all, uh, not going to be... Theodore Moody! <laughs> It's a towel. <laughs> Jack and Jowl went up to the hilt to scratch. <laughs> That's wrong thing. What was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch it. <laughs> If uh, you ladies will excuse me, I'll go and wash off the mustard. Hmm? Oh, shut up! <laughs> what did I do with that subpoena? You probably left it on the living room table. Oh, no. Well, once again, you wave a fond farewell to Lake Placid. Oh, no, Vivian, no. Hey, I got one more chance. Tomorrow morning, I'll go into New York and give it to him on the boat. Oh, that's great. A subpoena will make a great Bon Voyage present. <laughs> bon Voyage present, yeah. Yeah, I'll wrap the subpoena around a big bottle of champagne. Ah, uh, I needed that. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, pardon me, sir, but is Mrs. Mooney on board yet? Uh, not yet, Stuart, no, no. Oh, well, as soon as all the visitors have gone ashore, the captain's ready to sail. He can't sail without Irma. <laughs> well, that's up to the captain, sir. Well, she'll be here in a minute. It's... Well, I'll go and talk to the captain. Job, but I, I thought you'd be furious. 
is. Not at all, no. Oh. no. Where is Irma? <coughs> she should be here. She doesn't have enough clothes. She had to go and buy just one more sundress. Well, don't be too upset at her, Mr. Mooney. I expect she's very excited about going on this vacation with you. And you certainly have something to celebrate. After all, you're getting away from me for six whole weeks. <laughs> oh, I'll drink to that. Oh, yes. oh by all means. Oh, yes. thank you. Yes, this is an unexpected indeed. pleasure. Well, it's mine, I assure you. What a thing to drink to, yes. <laughs> well, to vacations. To vacations. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> oh, my. Ooh. I've been looking forward to this trip for ages. Just think, no telephone calls, no bank business. Uh, do you realize there are only 12 passengers on this ship? Is that so? Yes, sir, Just 12. 12. Mm -hmm. And we won't even touch a port for 28 days. Oh, gosh, that sounds marvelous. Yeah. And isn't it amazing, the moment you step aboard, you could swear that the ship is moving. Yes. I can almost feel the roll of the ocean. Yes, I know what you mean, yes. yes. Oh, my, you're going to have a lovely time. Just imagine looking out your porthole every day and seeing nothing but the ocean. Just the ocean and an occasional shoreline disappearing into the distance. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, an occasional shoreline disappearing into the distance. The people getting smaller. <laughs> Irma waving goodbye from the dark. Irma waving goodbye from the dark! Oh, no! No! And we don't reach port for 28 days. 28 days? Oh, I'm going to get my vacation sooner than I thought. <laughs> oh, 28 days with you on board? I couldn't stand it. I just couldn't stand it. Not 28 days. Oh, not 28 days. There ain't any right time. There ain't any right time. Question 3. Who gets stuck on the ship with Mr. Mooney? 1. Lucy. 2. Captain Kidd. 3. Popeye the Sailor. Question 3. Who gets stuck on the ship with Mr. Mooney? 1. Lucy. 2. Captain Kidd. 3. Popeye the Sailor The answer, Lucy gets stuck on the ship while serving the subpoena.